This tutorial is designed to give you a basic understanding of how to work with keyframes in Premiere Pro 2.0. So what exactly are keyframes? Well, keyframes are specific points in time where we as the editor determine the value of a clip's effects property or properties that are being animated. The computer then calculates and renders the in-between frames that are required to complete the animation. Keyframes are applied to clips in Premiere using the Effects Controls panel. First, select the clip that you wish to work with in your Timeline Sequence panel. In this case, I'll be using this title clip called Scale. In your Effects Controls panel, make sure the Show Hide button for your Timeline view is clicked so that you see a version of your timeline. This is important as it is here that you will see the keyframes that you will be creating. To keep things simple, I'll be using the Fixed Effect Motion to demonstrate. Let's expand the Motion Effects properties by clicking the Twirly key. I'll be setting keyframes on the scale property. The first thing I need to do is decide when I want this animation to start. In this case, I'm at the beginning of my clip and the beginning of the sequence, 0 seconds and 0 frames, so I'll start the animation here. I'll click the stopwatch beside the scale property to start creating keyframes. You can see that the moment the stopwatch is clicked, a keyframe is created on the scale property at the current time. Its value is 100%. I'll change that by left hand mouse clicking on the value and typing in a new value of 60%. Currently there is no animation as there is only one keyframe that has been created. You need at least two keyframes to animate a property. Let's move forward in time and set another keyframe by again clicking on the scale value and entering a new number. This time we'll make it 150%. Now when I play the clip back from the beginning you can see that the title is animating in scale from 60 to 150%. If we place the current time indicator between the two keyframes and add another value, let's say 200%, a new keyframe will be created. It's important to remember that once you've clicked the stopwatch, whenever you change an animation property's value at a point in time where no keyframe exists, a new keyframe will be created. If you want to adjust an existing keyframe, you must place the current time indicator over it before changing its value. Here's a common mistake. I might think that the current time indicator is over this keyframe and I'm adjusting its value. However, when we zoom in on our effects control panel timeline, we can see that I actually created a new unwanted keyframe. This is where the keyframe navigation tools come in handy. The right and left triangles allow you to jump to the previous or next keyframe. If there is no keyframe to jump to, the respective button will be grayed out. These buttons are very handy when you're trying to line up keyframes for multiple effect properties. The middle diamond shape button is the add or remove keyframe button. It actually serves several purposes. Clicking it at a point in time where there is currently no keyframe will create a keyframe. The keyframe's value will be whatever the property value was at that point in time. If the current time indicator is placed over a keyframe, clicking the add remove button will remove the keyframe. Keyframes can also be removed by right hand mouse clicking on them and selecting clear or selecting the keyframe and pressing the delete key on your keyboard. Clicking the stopwatch will remove all of your keyframes and the effect property value will be whatever it was at that point in time. Notice that when the current time indicator is placed over a keyframe, the add remove keyframe button turns a dark gray. When you want to edit an already existing keyframe's value, this is a great way to make sure you are not accidentally creating a new keyframe. You can change any keyframe's timing by simply selecting it and moving it to a different point in time. Holding down the shift key or using marquee select allows you to select multiple keyframes. This includes keyframes from multiple properties across multiple effects. These keyframes can then be moved as a group using the cursor with the left hand mouse button held down. This allows you to change when the animation happens without altering the keyframes relationship to each other so that the timing of the animation is preserved. After selecting a group of keyframes, holding down the Alt button and then moving the keyframes will cause duplicates of all the selected keyframes to be created. This is handy when you want to repeat an animation that utilizes a number of different keyframes. By changing this rotation keyframe to a hold keyframe, I quickly create a nice animation where the title scales and rotates multiple times. 
We'll learn more about whole keyframes and other keyframe types in the Advanced Keyframe Editing Tutorial.